thank the colleagues. Can I remind members that uh, social distancing measures are in place in the Chamber and across the Scottish Parliament and can I ask members please to take care to observe these measures over the course of this afternoon's business, including uh, when entering and leaving the Chamber. The next item of business is a statement by Ivan McKee on the mobilisation of the Scottish manufacturing base and sourcing to support NHS Scotland. The Minister will take questions at the end of his statement and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I call the Minister, Ivan McKee. Thank you, President Officer. The COVID-19 public health crisis has raised significant challenges in meeting the rapidly increasing needs of our health and social care services. The response of the government, our agencies and partners and the Scottish business community has been crucial in overcoming these challenges. This afternoon, I will summarise the government's supply chain programme, the collaborative actions we have taken to address potential shortages and the challenges and opportunities that remain. By quoting examples of Scottish businesses, I will illustrate the tremendous progress made in only a matter of weeks in meeting demand, building resilience, reshoring activity and enhancing self-sufficiency. While we will continue to source from global supply chains, our dependence on them, our exposure to global pressures and price volatility for key product lines has greatly decreased. I hope that outcome commands the support of all parties. We can, of course, go further. My particular commitment as Innovation Minister is to support the NHS and Scottish businesses to harness the power of innovation to meet future health service needs and to enhance economic recovery. And I will say more about that theme towards the end of my statement. The COVID-19 pandemic is one of the greatest public health challenges our society has ever faced. The sheer scale of it risks overwhelming NHS capacity and the ability of supply chains to respond. As the severity and spread of the pandemic became clear, three things were quickly apparent. Global demand for PPE and equipment had risen exponentially. Sources of supply had dried up and trade barriers had increased. Usual supply chains faltered as movement restrictions and lockdowns were imposed in China and other major centres of production. At the same time, the capacity to move international freight by air dwindled rapidly as passenger flights were curtailed and planes grounded. In Scotland, NHS forecasts indicated that we would need to source huge quantities of PPE, medical equipment like ventilators, hand sanitizer and swab tests, merely to keep pace with surging demand. Faced with this scenario, we chose a strategy designed to deliver results, a considered and selective approach. We have directed all our efforts and resources into finding new, dependable sources of supply, both internationally and at home. And it's useful, presiding officer, at this point to consider some of the things we chose not to do. We did not rush into accepting unverified offers when faced with warnings that supplies would soon be gone or prices hiked. We have not dealt through layers of brokers or taken offers yielding small quantities. And most importantly, we have not cut corners or let our quality standards slip. Instead, our choice was to assemble a multi-agency team to identify rapidly those offers of support which could supply us with high volumes of approved products in the fastest possible times. And in parallel with that, to work with businesses to grow Scottish capacity to produce key products and build resilience. The procurement and technical expertise of the NHS, the Scottish Government, Scottish Enterprise, Scottish Development International and the National Manufacturing Institute of Scotland have been harnessed to buy products of the right standard, in the right quantities and in the right timescales. This multi-agency team has worked tirelessly to support the NHS and I want to place on record my sincere thanks to them all. Their efforts are well reflected in the ongoing achievements of the programme. I would like to give some examples of where we have built resilience and are moving towards self-sufficiency, including several new domestic supply chains established in record time. A supply chain for hand sanitizer has been created from scratch. Production at Calachem and Grangemouth using spirit from Scottish distillers and Scottish bottling capacity can satisfy all current health and social care needs in Scotland. A supply chain has been established to produce non-sterile gowns for the NHS. Don and Lowe and Forfar are producing enough base fabric to make one million non-sterile gowns for NHS Scotland. This will satisfy over half of our NHS and social care requirements in Scotland. 
Keela and Glenrothes and Transcal and Endura and Livingston are amongst the firms converting that raw material into gowns and shipping them to our frontline services. Across a range of other product lines, Scottish businesses are benefiting from a stream of NHS orders and improving their self-sufficiency. Berry BPI in Greenock and Dumfries will produce 2 million aprons per week from the start of June as part of an order for over 100 million aprons from NHS Scotland. This order alone meets around 40% of our NHS and social care demand. The picture for visors is even better. Alpha Solway of Annan, who I heard on uh, GMS this morning, are producing 1.1 million visors for the NHS at a rate of 20,000 per day, more than meeting current Scottish demand. And I can announce that we have successfully created manufacturing supply chain for masks, utilising product from Don and & Law and the manufacturing expertise of Alpha Solway. Backed by a significant NHS order and support from Scottish Enterprise, Alpha Solway are about to commence manufacturing FFP3 face masks, the type worn in intensive care with newly installed machinery. The company has more machinery arriving next month to increase their production capacity still further. Once fully up and running, this new plant will be capable of producing 5 million masks per week, well above NHS Scotland's demand, so creating export potential. And what's more, the company is expected to create at least 50 more jobs in total in the coming months in Dumfries and Annan, with 30 of those already in post. This adds to the recent announcement by Honeywell at Newhouse that they will manufacture 70 million masks for use across the UK. Scotland's production of PPE is not only building self-sufficiency, but also creating jobs and opening export opportunities. Beyond sanitizer and PPE, many businesses are repurposing their facilities to support NHS needs. For example, Scottish Enterprise is supporting two manufacturers as part of work led by Babcock International to design and produce new ventilators under the UK Ventilator Challenge initiative. Plexus and Raytheon will both be supporting the production of ventilators from their Kelso, Livingston and Glenrothes manufacturing facilities. These many achievements are of course just a snapshot of the supply chain programme and the wider business response to COVID-19. All members of this parliament will know of companies large and small in their areas who have put their shoulder to the wheel. And we will continue to highlight more examples of this work as we grow our domestic capabilities. Of course, while we were building our domestic supply chains, there was an urgent need to secure huge volumes of PPE from international sources to meet the immediate demands of our frontline services. In recent weeks, and despite the international difficulties I mentioned earlier, we have brought in seven charter flights delivering over 64 million face masks, 130,000 reusable gowns, 120,000 test kits, and 1,300 infusion pumps, with more to follow. Much needed ventilators and oxygen concentrators have arrived from the US and China, and in the spirit of mutual aid and assistance, our flights have carried cargoes for the NHS in Wales, plus donations free of charge for Scottish charities. Our international sourcing has been assisted greatly by our Scottish Government and Scottish Development International teams based in the overseas hubs. Their local knowledge, connections and expertise have been invaluable in qualifying international companies, checking certificates and export licences and making factory visits. And I take this opportunity to thank them on behalf of us for all their work. As the pandemic and our response to it evolves, other opportunities to build resilience present themselves. Through our test capacity, through our test supply chain group and engagement with the life science industry leadership group, work has started to examine the role Scotland can play in the manufacture of vaccines when these become available. We can also start to think about emerging themes and lessons. Our future systems must be more resilient, adaptable and sustainable. COVID-19 has both exposed vulnerabilities and highlighted core strengths. And one very positive side effect is an upsurge in innovative thinking. New ways of remote working, distance monitoring devices, new technologies for decontamination, enhanced protection from airborne virus particles, automation, circular economy, and service redesign. The National Manufacturing Institute of Scotland has worked to respond to many hundreds of companies who offer to help with manufacturing for the NHS speaking to more than 400 who offered support and continue to work on many of these alongside its own research and engineering community who have generated many additional proposals. I want Scotland to be the inventor and producer of the innovations that shape our future and not just 
to consumer of them. The words of our First Minister in the era before COVID-19, but never more relevant than now as we work our way through the current crisis. Thankfully, as the peak of the pandemic subsides, we can see the actions taken by this government, the NHS, and very importantly, by the public and businesses have helped to curb the worst potential impacts and boosted our capacity to respond. A huge amount has been achieved at unprecedented speed to source critical medical supplies and equipment. I congratulate Scottish businesses and public services on their fantastic efforts, rising to the occasion and supporting the national effort. I have painted a picture of the future, how we are supporting innovation, building self-sufficiency and putting Scotland at the forefront of supply chain resilience now and in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. The Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes uh, for questions, after which we will move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question were to press the request to speak buttons now. And I call Maurice Golden. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I thank the Minister for early sight of his statement, as well as his mention of the circular economy in that statement. It is absolutely right that our focus should be on supporting the NHS right now, and that includes mobilising our manufacturing base to assist whenever possible. Indeed, that is already happening with businesses across Scotland stepping up to help. For example, we recently saw the UK government sign a mammoth contract with Honeywell based in North Lanarkshire to produce 70 million pieces of PPE, not to mention creating 450 local jobs. Are there many firms who have broken out of their existing sector to begin manufacturing PPE equipment, such as Don and Lowe and Keela, as mentioned by the Minister? Each and every one of them deserves our thanks. For Scottish manufacturing to play its full role, employees must be given the support they need to do their jobs. I'm pleased to see that theme echoed in the manufacturing guidance and the statement today. McCallum Water Heating, based in East Renfrewshire, is one such firm safely producing components for the NHS. Despite proving they can work safely, the SNP will not allow them to fully reopen. That puts them at risk because the NHS contracts alone will not cover their outgoing. And English firms that are reopening can bid for contracts without competition from Scottish manufacturers. Will the Minister agree to address this unfairness? Minister. Wow, um, okay. Um, yeah, and the member will be well aware that this issue has been well covered by uh, my colleague, Fiona Hislop, who spoke yesterday at length about the steps we're taking to work with the manufacturing and other sectors uh, as we return to work post-lockdown. And you will understand very, very well that the Scottish Government focus is to pray, place the, the health of the population of Scotland to the fore and to work with others to make sure the evidence-based scientific-led approach makes sure that we manage the uh, return from lockdown in the safest way possible that ensures that the people of Scotland um, are, 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 are stay, stay, stay through this situation. So I can only point them to the work that we've done on this and to the statement made by my colleagues as I've indicated and to our priority which is to make sure that the safety of the people of Scotland is paramount in this situation. I call Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I also want to thank the Minister for prior sight of his statement. He acknowledges in the statement that the Scottish Government were caught in the hop and had insufficient PPE to cover demand. And I also remember at the start of the pandemic, many companies offering to help but received no response to that offer while people were making scrubs at their kitchen table for frontline staff who couldn't get them. While lessons have to be learned and emergency planning must be put in place going forward, does he believe that if the Scottish Government had an industrial strategy that they would have been better able to respond? And can I also ask whether he will make sure that small and medium-sized enterprises are not shut out of this production going forward? Minister Ivan McLean. Yeah, I mean, several points. And first of all, that is absolutely not the case. At no point was there a risk to the supply of PPE um, to the frontline services in Scotland. Uh, there were 45 million items of PPE in the stockpile at the start of 
the crisis and we have dis supplied over 200 million items of PPE to frontline services in, uh, through the course of uh, since the 1st of March and we've at the current situation got uh, 118 million items of PPE in the central warehouse in addition to stocks in hospitals, care home and elsewhere. So it's absolutely not the case for the record that at uh, any point there was a risk of us running out of uh, running out of stock. Um, in terms of an industrial strategy, I mean, I've read uh, Labour's um, so-called industrial strategy document, uh, it's pretty thin and pretty weak. Um, that is a slogan, that's a sound bite. This is us actually delivering an industrial strategy where it matters on the ground, working with businesses and others to actually make it happen in reality. And in terms of um, the response to businesses, um, I, I said in our statement, our focus was very, very clear and very, very blunt. It was to access the highest quality, highest volume of product to the right specifications in the fastest possible time and get that to the front line. And I don't think anybody in the front line services, anybody in this parliament or anybody across Scotland would say that our priority should have been different from that. In that consequence, we focused on the businesses that could deliver the volume as, uh, as required to meet those specifications. We have gone through every single offer of help, more than 2,000 and responded to them. But as I said, as you would expect, our priority has been on identifying the ones that could actually do the business and deliver for us. Now move to open questions and I call Stuart McMillan to be followed by Andy Whiteman. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. The, the Health Secretary told the Health Committee that the UK Government has said they would no longer support Scottish Government's efforts to procure PPE for Scotland. Can the Minister tell me when the Scottish Government were informed of this decision by the UK Government and what the response of the Scottish Government has been to it? Minister. Yeah, I thank the member for the question. Um, yeah, the Permanent Secretary of the Scottish um, Government got a letter from um, the, uh, um, well, from the, the UK Government on the 16th of April this year, and, and that said that the Joint Action Coordination Team, JACT, which is a combination of DIT and FCO and the UK Government, have, on the advice of ministers, advised the overseas network of the UK Government not to undertake additional work to support any new procurement asks on behalf of devolved administrations. Uh, we find that's unfortunate. Obviously, there are, um, there's a responsibility on FCO, UK Government FCO, to support devolved administrations in areas that are devolved. Healthcare and healthcare procurement is devolved. So we found it unfortunate that um, that step was being taken by UK Government to not support our efforts to secure um, PPE for frontline services internationally. Despite that, as I referred to in my statement, the fact that we've got a Scottish Government office uh, in, uh, in Beijing, the fact that we've got SDI working in several locations in, uh, in China and uh, other locations internationally, including the US I mentioned, meant that we were able to um, work directly with manufacturers in those uh, in China in particular um, and other places and ensure that the product was supplied to Scotland and was supplied with the correct certifications and so on, despite the, um, the, the, the action taken by FCO and DIT. Call Andy Whiteman to be followed by Willie Wright. Thanks, Presiding Officer. I thank the Minister for advance side of his statement. Uh, much of this equi equipment is, of course, for single use, and that's for very obvious reasons, but it does raise the question of disposal, which wasn't addressed in his statement. Given that his statement is focused on innovation, what efforts have been made to ensure that after use, these items simply don't end up in landfill or incinerated? Minister. Uh, it's an excellent question from uh, Andy Whiteman, and perhaps I should have uh, mentioned in my statement the extensive work that is going on. We recognised very early in this process that there was a need to look at uh, re reusable options because of the sheer volume of products running into the hundreds of millions that were, uh, were, were being disposed of. Um, work has moved forward on that. I'll say obviously our first priority, as you would expect, is to ensure that we fully comply with all the requirements and that any reusable pieces of PPE that are put into frontline services are fully tested and there are adequate processes in place to uh, ensure their safe, uh, safe recycling. Um, but we have already taken steps forward. I know that uh, Trade right, I believe the business name down in, uh, in, in Greenock is, uh, is working on a, a proposal for the recycling of hand sanitizer um, bottles, which is very, very welcome because as that process comes into place, that will significantly help uh, with the, the supply chain as well. Um, there are other uh, 
chains, supply chains are working on at the moment on gowns and uh, goggles where reusable items are coming to the fore, have been delivered already, are going through approval processes and will be on the front line, if not already, in the near, uh, the near future. So it's something we're very, very much focused on. It's an area, as he rightly says, uh, where there's a great potential for innovation um, and it's an area we continue to explore opportunities to uh, further build resilience um, and to, to, uh, to support frontline services and, of course, to uh, support our drive towards the recircle, recircle economy. Willie Rennie to be followed by Annabel Ewing. Uh, this morning it was announced that Numagen, based out of St Andrews, has been awarded £4 million investment to allow clinical development of Numafil for the prevention and treatment of COVID-19. This includes £1 million from the Scottish Investment Bank. The company eventually wants to manufacture in Scotland, but at present they would need to do this with a company in the north of England, as Scotland does not have the capacity. Is that something that the Minister could perhaps help with? Minister. Yeah, I thank uh, Willie Rennie very much for that question and I'd be delighted to help the business uh, he mentions in terms of what we can do to um, support their efforts to manufacture uh, those products in Scotland. Very much um, needed products as we move forward in the fight against uh, against the uh, the COVID-19 virus. Um, it's great that the business has already accessed support from the Scottish Investment Bank um, and I would uh, look forward to following up those conversations. As I mentioned in my statement, NMIS has worked uh, extensively with uh, hundreds of businesses that have innovative solutions that we want to move forward and the engagement I've had with uh, the life science sector through the life science ILG and others in the area of test, vaccine and cure, um, looking for opportunities for Scottish businesses to support in these very, very important areas. Annabel Ewing to be followed by Miles Brigg. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Chancellor of the Exchequer and the Prime Minister have repeatedly stated that they will send, spend billions on personal protective equipment. Can the Minister therefore confirm that the UK Government has guaranteed that Scotland will receive the hundreds of millions of pounds of consequentials that should flow from this additional UK spend in a devolved area? Minister Ivan McKee. Uh, unfortunately, the UK Government have so far not agreed to provide any consequentials due to Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland. And it's essential that the Scottish Government receives an appropriate budget transfer from the UK Government for that spend. The Finance Secretary has written to the UK Government to underline these expectations and the Scottish Government will keep Parliament informed of further developments. Miles Briggs to be followed by Maureen Ward. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary for Health has stated that the national stockpile was not sufficient in some respects. Can the Minister say what investigations has taken place into that? And reading between the lines from his statement today, is what he is saying that the Scottish Government want to, in the future, look towards a permanent Scotland and UK protected supply chain for the NHS and care sector? Minister Ivan McKee. I already gave the, 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 the numbers on what the situation in the stockpile was at the, the start of the epidemic and the amount of PP that we brought in over the last, uh, the last period of weeks. In terms of the supply chain, of course, it's our um, desire, as I said in my statement, that Scotland is the innovator and the manufacturer of technologies, existing technologies and technologies of the future. Um, PPE is clearly an area where we um, understand the importance of resilience, we understand the importance of self-sufficiency and it's one of a number of sectors where we are working very hard to ensure that there is a Scottish supply chain that is able to supply the needs of the sector in Scotland. Maureen Watt to be followed by David Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I thank the Minister for all the work he has done in this field. The Minister will be aware of the work of the Oil and Gas Technology Centre in Aberdeen, which has brought together manufacturers across the industry to help in the fight to tackle the virus, such as Air Control Entech, who are producing 1,000 face shields per day for hospital and care homes. A further 10 projects are about one month for de from deployment, such as the processing power of the NDC supercomputer to help arrest the spread of the virus? And can he say what further engagement the government uh, will have with the OGTC with regard to future initiatives? Minister. Uh, the, the member raises some very, um, very good points. I um, thank the, the, the business she mentioned for 
uh, production of PPE. It's one of many, many examples, far too many to, uh, to mention, I'll hope at some point in the future we'll be we will be able to produce um, a more comprehensive list of all the businesses that are part of these, uh, these now extensive supply chains. And the sector, the oil and gas sector, clearly has some um, very advanced technology which can be adapted. I, I know there's businesses in that sector that have specialism in breathing equipment that have looked and, and are turning that expertise to breathing equipment for support of uh, the fight against, uh, against the virus in, the, in a hospital setting. So that's all to be welcome and I'm always delighted to engage with innovation in the sector to see how we can help to repurpose and adapt that to the fight that we all currently face. David Stewart to be followed by Joan McAlpern. Thank you, President Officer. Will the Minister join with me in congratulating Inverness born design engineer Ross Hunter, who has reached the final of a global competition to invent a low cost mechanical ventilator to help those afflicted by the coronavirus pandemic? Is this not an example of initiative and innovation the Minister was referring to in his statement? Minister Ivan McKee. Yeah, I, I thank the um, member for the question and yeah, I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate Ross Hunter. I think that uh, when that was brought to my attention that he'd got through to the final of this international uh, challenge, then it was, um, as the member said, a real testament to Scottish ingenuity and innovation and I wish him well in, uh, in this endeavour and in anything that he chooses to turn his hand to in the future. Joan McAlpine to be followed by Michelle Ballantyne. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Minister for his very encouraging statement? Does he agree that while Scotland's efforts to procure PPE have produced excellent results in recent months, building resilience in domestic supplies, such as those produced by Alpha Solway in my constituency region, is an absolute necessity to ensure that the safety of Scottish key workers is not dependent on a fluctuating global market? Minister Ivan McKee. Yeah, yes, I do agree with the, the member and Alpha Solwe, as she has uh, highlighted, are, are a prime example of the work that has taken place within Scotland for businesses to step up and um, build resilience here to protect us against the, the, the vagaries of what can be um, a, a, a difficult, at this time, um, international market. So, again, I congratulate and uh, thank the companies that have, uh, that have engaged, including Alpha Solway and uh, we look forward to continuing to build strength and resilience into those Scottish supply chains. Michelle Ballantyne to be followed by James Dornan. Thank you and can I refer the Chamber to my um, register of interests. Many manufacturers are going above and beyond to support the NHS by helping with the manufacturing effort. If the government wish to continue to rely on their goodwill, it is important that manufacturers have trust in both the, the government and the NHS. This trust was recently undermined in the case of one company earlier this month. Adam Short, who owns a laser cutting company in Ayrshire, who has reportedly been left 12,000 in debt after a deal with NHS Ayrshire and Arran to produce 16,000 visors was cancelled at short notice, meaning Mr Short distributed the face mask for free to desperate nurses who he says are coming to him directly. Mr Short, however, says he spent 20,000 adapting his factory so it could produce PPE. The Minister has already referred to the fact that the production of PPE has increased significantly during the last month or two. And I want to ask the Minister, will he confirm that he can make sure that well-intentioned business owners are not left out on a limb by the very organisations they are trying to help? There are now, as I understand it, 400 firms who have offered to help. So what safeguards are in place for manufacturers like these? And can the Minister assure me that other businesses offering similar assistance are not being treated in a similar manner? Minister Ivan McKee. Well, the, the member hasn't shared, as far as I'm aware, any details of this business with me. Um, and I've, uh, so I've not had an opportunity to have a look into that. Um, I undertake to have a look at the situation and see what the contractual arrangement was with that business. But clearly, they had a contract to supply and that contract hasn't been fulfilled then that is a situation that we will address. If they don't have a contract, then clearly that's a different situation. But I undertake to have a look and see what the, the situation was. Um, and in terms of business of supplying the NHS or health boards, that process is obviously clearly well defined. It follows very strict rules and procedures, as you would expect with the spending of public money to make sure that that is done um, in a, a, in a proper, proper fashion. And businesses that have engaged with um, NHS for supply contracts and have those contracts in place. Yes, of course, we would expect those to be honoured 
And if that is not the situation, I would uh, undertake to have a look and see what the situation is. James Dornan to be followed by Monica Lennon. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the Minister for all the hard work he's done uh, during this period as well. And I'm sure that there'll be many small companies who will be delighted to hear about the opportunities that are going to arise from the uh, upsurge and innovative thinking that's going on. But we're all aware that this deadly virus does not recognise boundaries. So does the Minister agree with me that working between countries, exemplified by the Scottish Government's recent lending of 1.1 million fluid-resistant masks to Wales, is vital during this uh, crisis? And the, 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 uh, the UK government's decision not to participate in the first round of PPE procurement uh, uh, displays exactly the wrong message on working together. I shouldn't be, working sorry? Together. Yeah? Minister, Ivan McKee. <laughs> Thank the member for the question. I, I, I think he might be replying to the, the EU process for um, procurement and exercises. Um, and yeah, we were on the record at the time as saying that the... Uh, the UK government should have participated in those, um, those programmes. And in terms of the Scottish government, uh, absolutely we cooperate with um, the, the four nations and wider afield in terms of other uh, international governments to cooperate where it makes sense to make sure that we are all able to, uh, to benefit from the, the supply of PP. And as Scotland now moves into a situation where on many of these commodities we will be an exporter, we are obviously very keen to have conversations with uh, uh, international partners who want to avail themselves of Scotland's innovative um, and uh, manufacturing capabilities we have in the area of PPE. Monica Lennon to be followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, President Officer, and I thank the Minister for his statement. Can the Minister provide an update on the Scottish Government's talks with Midlothian-based firm Quotient on supplying a coronavirus blood test that it had invented to the NHS. With orders for the antibody tests filling up from other countries, it is feared that Scotland could miss out. The local MP, Owen Thompson, has given the company his backing. So can I ask the Minister if he can advise when a decision will be reached and when does he expect the NHS in Scotland to be able to offer antibody testing? Minister. Uh, well, in terms of the antibody testing, obviously that's an area that's developing as the, the technology and the research develops. And in terms of businesses that can support in that area, uh, providing antibody tests, providing the PCR tests, uh, providing lab um, um, uh, consumables for that process, providing um, equipment um, like Thermo Fisher uh, in Scotland or other businesses that are looking at vaccines. There's a whole range of businesses um, in the life science sector that we're engaged with. Quotient, I know, is one of them. Um, I, uh, I saw we responded back to them uh, recently. Um, we are engaged with them and a number of other businesses that have potential to support in the antibody test area and uh, the group that I mentioned earlier, um, which I chair on a daily basis, looking at uh, test supply chain issues, um, as looking at, 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 at their work and the work of other Scottish businesses in this area as part of their antibody work stream. Thank you very much. Brian Whittle to be followed by Neil Findlay. Yeah, thank you, presiding officer. I'm listening to some of the questions that have already been given to the minister. I wonder if he could confirm that consequentials are only due on new UK spend and not on the use of existing budgets and that his suggestion that the UK were not supplying the Scottish Government with extra PPE is, is at odds with the opinion of the clinical director, Jason Leach, and also the health cabinet secretary and the first minister. And this kind of blatant politicking, politicking is done not doing nothing to help us with this COVID challenge. Minister Ivan McKee. Sorry. Um, so, so just to be clear, the, the, the vast majority of PPE that we've used in Scotland has been um, brought in directly to Scotland by NSS, the, the, the purchasing arm of NHS Scotland. Um, the new spend, and if there is new spend on um, PPE at a UK level, which is what we're talking about, of course, would, um, as I understand it, incur consequentials because it is, uh, is additional spend to what was um, identified previously. And um, this is about making sure that the people of Scotland and the frontline services in Scotland get the support they need, whether that is through the PPE or the funding from the uh, UK government through that consequential process to be able to buy that PPE. And finally, Neil Findlay. Does the Minister agree that um, the COVID crisis has shown that the market cannot provide the answers to the very serious questions that we've been asked during this period and without major state intervention we would have seen a 
absolute disaster on our hands even greater than we have at the moment. Does that not mean that there has to be um, a recalibration of economic policy both here and across the UK to ensure that we go forward with a planned economy far more than just a market economy? Minister Ivan McKee. Well, I, I absolutely agree that there is a role for government in looking at the um, industrial landscape in the country and understanding where support is needed. That is what the agencies, Scottish Enterprise and uh, the other agencies engage in on a daily basis, where to support businesses that, uh, that are required for the, the, the national effort, be it in the fight against COVID or elsewhere. Um, but it's also, of, of course, important to remember that the businesses that have inter uh, stepped forward to support our private businesses are in their own right. Um, the government has no Stay intention on. of going into the PPE manufacturing business um, ourselves. Businesses are there that are able to do that. Scottish businesses or businesses based in Scotland, and we'll continue to support and work with them. But absolutely, I agree that government should uh, take a role in understanding what that landscape looks like and supporting where it makes strategic sense.